The Golden Gate Bridge is an iconic structure that utilizes cables to carry loads. Such cables are routinely used in bridges and other types of structures for load transfer. This lecture series deals with an introduction to the analysis of cables. The Golden Gate Bridge is a suspension bridge. Its deck is suspended from a pair of main cables using a series of vertical hangers. This arrangement allows most of the bridge load to be transferred to the main cables, which in turn transfer the load to the towers located at the ends of the bridge. In a scenario like this, given the close proximity of the hangers, we can assume that the main cables are being subjected to a distributed load. Furthermore, since the weight of each cable is insignificant compared to the load it must carry, we can neglect the cable's own weight when we are analyzing the system. Here is another interesting example. Consider this pedestrian bridge where the surface of the bridge deck follows the geometric shape of the cable. In this case, we can conceptualize the entire system as a cable that is hanging freely from its ends, carrying its own weight. This is similar to the behavior of a power line hanging from two supporting transmission towers. It is important to note the difference between the shape of the cable when an external load is hanging from it, such as in the case of the Golden Gate Bridge, as opposed to when the cable is hanging freely under its own weight, like it does in the Charles Kuonen suspension bridge. You may be wondering how the two scenarios differ. The difference is in the mathematical equations that define the shape of the cables. And if you are asking why we should care about this difference, because the shape of a cable affects its analysis. Let's pause here for a second and examine this difference more closely. Here is a cable suspended from its two ends. This configuration resembles that of the Golden Gate Bridge. Let's assume that the bridge deck exerts a uniformly distributed load of W on the cable along the x-axis. Assuming that the origin of the coordinate system is at the lowest point of the cable, we can draw the free body diagram of the segment just to the right of the origin, like this. Here, T0 is the tension force in the cable in its lowest point and T is the tension force at the right end of the segment. We use alpha to denote the angle that the cable makes with the horizontal axis at its right end. Since the segment has to remain in equilibrium, the sum of the forces in the horizontal and vertical directions must be zero. Therefore, we can write, dividing the second equation by the first equation, we get, since tangent alpha can be expressed as the change in y with respect to the change in x, we can write, this differential equation can be easily solved for y where c is the integration constant. Since at the origin, where x equals zero, y is also zero, we can determine the value of c. It comes out to be zero. Hence, the equation that describes the shape of the cable can be written as this is a parabolic function. Therefore, when a cable is subjected to a linear distributed load, its shape can be defined using a parabola. Now, let's consider the case in which the cable hangs freely under its own weight. Note that the weight of the cable is not distributed along the x-axis. Rather, it is distributed along the arc length of the cable. The free body diagram for the segment of the cable to the right of the origin can be drawn this way. Note that the arc length of the segment is denoted by S. This free body diagram yields two equilibrium equations. They are, dividing the second equation by the first equation, we get and since tangent alpha can be written as dy over dx, we can write. However, before we can solve this differential equation, we need to replace s with x and y. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can write ds in terms of dx and 
dy. If we take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to x, we get... Since w and t0 are constant, the right side of the equation becomes... Substituting this term for ds, the equation becomes... Or, when solved, this second-order differential equation yields... This is the function that describes the shape of the cable suspended under its own weight. This is not a parabola. It is a transcendental equation called a catenary. So, in analyzing cable systems that are subjected to distributed loads, depending on the source and nature of the loads, we may have to use different mathematical functions to describe the shape of each cable. This lecture series deals with the analysis of such cable systems. Let's start with a simple example. Consider a weightless cable spanning a distance of 10 metres between two poles. Attached to the cable are two traffic lights. They cause the cable to settle, forming three straight segments. We refer to them as segments AB, BC and CD. Suppose that each light is 400 newtons in weight. The two lights divide the span of the road into three equal distances. Due to the symmetrical placement of the lights and the position of the cable, we know points B and C displace downward the same amount. When measured, the vertical distance from the top of each pole to points B and C is 0.6 of a metre. We wish to determine the tension force in each segment of the cable. The solution for this problem is rather straightforward. Let's start by drawing the free body diagram of the cable. There are two support reactions at each end of the cable. Therefore, the three static equilibrium equations can be written as Using the second and third equations, we can solve for the vertical reactions. But the horizontal reactions cannot be determined from the first equation since it has too many unknowns. In this case, however, we can determine the unknown forces without resorting to these equations. Let's cut the cable in segment BC and draw the free body diagram of the left side of the cable system. Since only three unknown forces appear on this free body diagram, we can calculate them using the static equilibrium equations. If we sum the moments about point A, we get... Knowing T, B, C, now we can sum the forces in the X direction to determine A, X. And summing the forces in the Y direction gives us A, Y. To determine the tension force in segment AB, let's draw the free body diagram for point A. Since the sum of the forces at A must be zero, the algebraic sum of the reaction forces must be equal to the tension force in the cable. Therefore, we can write... Because the system is symmetrical, we know that the tension force in segment CD is equal to the tension force in segment AB. In summary, the two traffic lights cause the following tension forces to develop in the cable. This was a very simple example. Now let's consider a less trivial case. Suppose the right traffic light is positioned 1.8 meters from the right pole, which makes the loading on the cable unsymmetrical. This causes the cable to settle like this. In the previous example, we did not need to calculate any of the support reactions first. Here, however, we need to calculate AY or DY in order to be able to analyse the cable. Let's go ahead and do that. To determine AY and DY, we need to write two equilibrium equations. By summing the moments about point A, we can determine dy. And by summing the forces in the y direction, we can calculate ay. To determine the tension force in segment BC, 
similar to the previous example, we can draw the free body diagram for the left segment of the system, like this. Note that the diagram embodies four unknowns. There are two unknown forces, one unknown angle and one unknown distance. To solve the problem, we need another piece of information. In this case, we need to know this height. Let's assume that the vertical distance from point A to point B is 0.45 meters. That is, H1 equals 0.45 meters. So, if we sum the moments about point B, we can determine AX. And if we sum the forces in the X and Y directions, we can determine the X and Y components of TBC. Knowing these components, we can determine the magnitude of the force. and the angle alpha. To determine the tension force in segment AB, just like with the previous example, we can use the free body diagram of point A. Since the sum of the forces at A must be zero, TAB equals... To determine the tension force in segment CD, let's use the free body diagram of joint D. Since the sum of the forces at D must be zero, we can write... Here are the tension forces in the cable. As we just saw, the analysis of cable systems involves applying the static equilibrium equations to different segments of the system, while keeping in mind that no more than three unknowns should be present in any segment. We will continue our discussion on cables in the next lecture. For now, see if you can solve the following problems.